Ever struggled with a slow or corrupted operating system and wished you could fix it like a pro? What if I told you there's a way to boot, install, and repair any OS, whether it's Windows, Linux, or even a network-based setup without breaking a sweat? In this video, I'll reveal the ultimate methods IT professionals use, from creating bootable USB drives with tools like Rufus to mastering unattended installations and system repairs. Say goodbye to tech headaches, and hello to becoming the go-to IT expert. Ready to transform your skills? Let's dive in. We're going to start this new course by looking at the different methods we have to get started on the operating system. And we will finish with the different types of installations. In general, when you turn on a desktop PC, the launch is done on the hard drive because this is where you install the operating system. But you can very well boot a PC from a USB flash to launch another system like, for example, with a Linux. The method, which was once very common, is that of booting through a CD, DVD, or Blu-ray drive that is, any optical drive. This is a bit like the method we use when we want to mount an image of an operating system on VirtualBox. The system image will be burned on a disk, and all you have to do is set up your BIOS so that the boot is done on it. Let's move on to another method, which is the USB flash drive. Today, it is the most common process among individuals because it's simple and above all, fast. The charging speed of a USB flash drive will always be much faster than an optical disk drive. For that, we're going to see two methods to create a bootable USB drive. The one with the Windows Creation Tool, Media Creation Tool, which will automatically download the image to the USB flash drive, and the one with the famous Rufus software, Media Creation Tool. Here are the steps to follow to get a bootable USB flash of the latest Windows with the Media Creation Tool software. First, download the tool by doing a simple Google search. Install it on your PC after accepting the terms of the license agreement. Then click on Create Installation Media and choose the version of Windows you want to install there. As we want to create a USB flash, we will choose the USB flash memory disk option. The option just below, which is ISO file, allows you to install Windows on a DVD media. This is what we talked about just before for an installation with an optical drive. After clicking on Next, you will be offered to choose the removable media on which you want to dedicate for the creation of the Windows bootable media. In fact, it's the disc where I play my latest movies and series, so I'm not going to go all the way to the end of the installation with this media because the tool will have to format the disc before making it a bootable media, and I still have a lot of things to look at. Now let's talk about the Rufus software. This tool is the reference in the field of bootable media creation because not only can you create a bootable Windows USB drive, but it also supports all other operating systems, especially those that run on the Linux kernel. As with the previous tool, we'll see the steps to create bootable media with Rufus. To get started, you need to download and launch it, always asking your dear friend Google. Here is the interface you will have after launching Rufus. In Device, you will need to select the removable media reserved for booting. In Boot Type, you leave in Disk Image or ISO. Then right next to it, either you click on Selection and you will look for the ISO image of the system you want to install on it. Or you choose Download and the tool will automatically download the Windows system on Microsoft servers, as with the first tool we saw. Then you leave everything by default and all you have to do is start the process. So be careful, because here too, the tool will delete all the data present in the media. 
Let's move on to another method of starting, which is quite peculiar, because here it is a question of starting from the network. This is called the PXE, Preboot Execution Environment, boot. Eat support technicians who work in large companies have to install Windows on hundreds of PC. Starting a Windows installation over the network allows you to have an image that is already configured with the needs of the company, available in the same place on the network. Instead of walking around with your small removable hard drive from desktop to office, it is possible to go and get this image on the network to launch the installation. This makes the IT support job much easier because the PC will not need an installation disk and a USB flash to boot. All you have to do is connect it to the network and off you go. Well, not really, but in the idea, that's it. Because you will still have to enter the BIOS of each machine to activate the PXE boot. Now, let's move on to a traditional boot plus method which is to boot directly through the PC's internal hard drive. Once Windows has been installed, you will need to tell the PC to boot to the disk where the installation took place, which is, in general, the internal hard drive of the PC. Again, it happens in the BIOS towards the boot options. And the last way to boot that we're going to see is the way to boot on the internal disk as well, but in a different partition. The idea here is to have a partition reserved only for Windows. This gives the advantage, if you have to reinstall Windows, to do it only on one partition of your disk, which will prevent you from having to delete everything. On my PC, you can see that I have a partition reserved for the operating system and another one called Save for my personal files. There is even my external drive from my movies and series. The advantage is that, if I want to reinstall Windows, for any reason, well, I won't have to move my personal files or my Google Drive to another disk. Now, let's move on to the different types of installations of an operating system. And we start with the installation without assistance. As you know, a good computer scientist is a lazy computer scientist. So, no, not in a bad way but rather in the sense that the computer scientist will do everything possible to automate as many processes as possible in order to free up time. By the way, a little aside, if you're looking for a job, and during your job interview, you're asked to find one of your flaws, and well, you can answer that you're lazy, if it is a position in the IT world, this defect will be seen more as a skill. To come back to the unattended installation, well, this installation mode allows the support technician to launch operating system or even software installations on users' PCs without having to move from his desk. So, how does it work? Well, you're going to have what's called a distribution server, which is actually just a file server. This server will contain all the file sources and all the software in a shared folder accessible, of course, by the network. Then, each user's PC will have a small client software to install, which will allow you to connect to the distribution server to launch the programs it needs. Now let's talk about the upgrade, which consists of migrating from one version to another. So, it's not just a small version update, here we are talking about a complete change of version. For example, moving from Windows 10 to Windows 11. But since the developers have planned everything in general, even if it's still an important update, the change of version happens like a simple update, except that it takes longer. Clean installation. Another type of installation is when you completely reinstall Windows. That is to say, without making any repairs, but well, a complete deletion of your hard drive to properly accommodate a new Windows. This is what we call a clean installation. If your Windows is experiencing huge slowness and you've tried everything to fix the problem, but nothing helps, then the best solution is to go for a complete reinstallation of your operating system and these drivers. 
A clean install also consists of reinstalling Windows completely instead of changing versions automatically, for example, by switching from Windows 10 to 11. Because in this case, the change from version 10 to 11 is not considered a clean installation, even if the version is completely different. That's why it may be better to start with a clean installation when it comes to completely changing versions. Even if, going from Windows 10 to 11, it's a bit like changing the operating system. Now, let's move on to the system repair, which consists of trying to repair the system files of the OS to avoid having to do a clean installation. The advantage is that with this process, you keep your personal files. So let's see the process to repair Windows without losing data. If Windows is accessible, if your Windows is still accessible and you want to start a repair, then it will be very fast. Open the Windows search bar located at the bottom right of your screen and type in the word reset. When you open the menu, all you have to do is click on start and let yourself be guided through the Windows reset process. You also have a shortcut to get to this menu. Just press the Windows plus R keys at the same time. And to run the command, Miss Settings, Dart Recovery. Don't forget to choose the option of Keep Your Files, because otherwise it won't be a repair, but rather a complete installation if Windows is inaccessible. Now, if your Windows is completely in trouble and it doesn't want to start anymore, let's see the process to successfully launch this repair. For this, you will need to boot on a removable media containing the same operating system you have. This is what we saw at the beginning of the course. When you start the Windows installation, you will have the option to click on Repair the Computer. Then you will have a small helper, which will open, and you will have to click Troubleshoot and Reset this PC or System Restore Multiboot. We will now talk about multibooting, which gives the possibility to install several operating systems on the same computer. Most people who multiboot use a free Linux-based boot manager, which calls itself Grub, Grand Unified Bootloader. Here is an example of what we will have to display when the PC starts if several operating systems are present on the hard disk. As you can see, this allows us to select the operating system we want to launch. The Grub software is what is called a bootloader, but you can also use other specialized software such as Partition Commander to create multiple bootable partitions on your internal hard drive or the Easy to Boot software, which allows you to put several systems in a removable media such as a USB flash. Remote Network Installation Another installation method frequently used in large companies that want to install the workstation of these customers in the same way is to place the installation source files in a shared folder and this way, the technician who goes to the customer's workstation will only have to connect to it to launch the installation he wants. This method has several variants, such as the possibility of automating installations by scripts. Image deployment, another very popular type of installation for recreating specific configurations is deploying images. An image in the world of computing is a complete copy of a hard disk volume, which contains the operating system and all the software you want to put on it. These images can be stored on servers so that the support technician only has to launch software on the customer's computer so that the copy of the image on his disk is launched. For many years, the leader in this technology was Symantec with its Norton Ghost tool. Today, other programs that have the same function are available on the market, such as the Clonezilla software or Acronis with its Snap Deploy module, Recovery Partition, and the last type of installation that we are going to see is the Recovery Partition, which is in fact a partition on the hard drive, allowing you to restore the factory settings of the operating system. This partition usually has no letter and no drive, as you can see in the screenshot of my disk manager.
In fact, the recovery partition stores, files, which are needed to get started, as well as troubleshooting tools. This partition has existed since Windows 8 and is therefore available on Windows 10 and 11.